All right, what's up everyone? It is uh, Friday, March the 1st. Thank goodness, it means winter's almost done. See that we're getting some snow tomorrow. That should, uh, it's just, it's nonstop. Anyways, um, so far today, uh, well, an hour, hour run this morning, just with some hill repeats. So some good strength work that was on the treadmill. Uh, and then did a hour long swim that uh, went real well as well. Had some good quality in there, some good hundreds. I ran to and from the pool. It's about a 10 minute run uh, both ways. Um, just uh, get some junk miles in. But um, anyways, I uh, then went, uh, had a quick bite to eat, then walked very quickly back to Physio, which is across the street from the pool. Um, had about an hour of, of work done on the, on the uh, machine here, and then walk back. So I, like I'm telling you, I got my steps in today. I think I was at, I'm at uh, 30,000 or something. About to hit up a very easy uh, bike workout. Um, just gonna do a group ride, um, and then I'll do some uh, strength. Uh, after that, uh, some practicing, just practicing some of the exercises that I, I picked up in physio, uh, just ingrain them, and then um, yeah, so before that, one of the things I just want to talk about real quick today was foam rolling. And in particular, what, the method that I use for foam rolling. Now, as you know, I have had my fair share of injuries, no question about it. However, having said that, it doesn't mean that I can't speak to things like this. I do have a master's in physiotherapy, so I can speak to um, recovery tools and, and strength training methods. So the reason I wanted to do this video is, is because, but I've been looking on YouTube and stuff like that and there's just a ton of videos out there on foam rolling, like an unbelievable amount of videos and they're all exactly the same, uh, doing the exact same thing. And what I'm here to tell you is that while that way is okay, the classic way that you've seen foam rolling, there are other ways to do it and perhaps get more out of it and enhance recovery further and maybe improve performance further. I'm not going to say that doing this is going to enhance performance 100%. Evidence is, you know, hit or miss. Uh, a lot of it's low quality evidence um, for foam rolling in particular. Um, but there is evidence nonetheless and it's gives you just another tool in the toolbox uh, and that's why I wanted to do this video because like I said every video on foam rolling, foam rolling is the exact same every one of them also I'll say happens to have people sitting on the IT band rolling up and down the IT band I, I'm telling you do not roll the IT band it will do absolutely nothing I'm telling you that right now there is no point to rolling the IT band I've seen the IT band at McMaster. You get the opportunity to do quite a bit of, of work with real life uh, cadavers. Seen what it looks like at, in, in the flesh. And let me tell you, if you think rolling it with this is going to do bupkis, you got another thing coming. The thing is about as thick as a tire. If anything, sit on TFL, but get off your IT band. But, so my point is, is that there's so many videos on foam rolling and they're all doing the exact same thing. And I'm not saying that that way is wrong. What I'm saying is that there are other ways that may be beneficial to you. So, basically what I'm talking about is using the foam roller, a, a vehicle for self soft, soft tissue release. Soft tissue release is something that's been used in massage forever whereby there's pressure put on a muscle and then you put the muscle through its range of motion while that pressure stays intact. The, the theory on it, like I said, with a lot of these things, evidence isn't clear. The theory is, is that it has something to do with, I'm not gonna get super technical into things, but it has something to do with the autonomic nervous system and the stretch reflex. Personally, I think it makes sense in terms of breaking up, you know, quote unquote, adhesions uh, in the muscle. What I've found is if it does anything is it can reduce pain and also I've found 
that it does improve the mobility of your muscle. And the key is, the absolute key with it is it needs to be done frequently. The only way that you're gonna get a long lasting effect on anything is if you do it frequently. It's just like things like acupuncture. People who think that they can go into acupuncture once a month and it's gonna change their life, they're wrong. Acupuncture needs to be done frequently to you, for you to get an effect. Um, and it goes like that for any exercise. You can't do a plank one day and all of a sudden have a six pack. You have to do it every single day. If you're gonna do that, and with foam rolling, it's no different. You're gonna have to do it every single day. So, here's the soft tissue release that I'm talking about. I'm gonna show you just the, the technique done on two different muscles, okay? So, like I said, the idea is, is that you're putting pressure on the muscle while putting the muscle through its range of motion. And the theory is it can help reduce pain, increase mobility or flexibility of the muscle, perhaps improve performance. A therapist that I had at McMaster, his theory on it, it, it sounds a little extreme, but his theory on it was that it allows you to basically damage, or he called it to bruise the muscle. Um, bruise is maybe a little bit extreme, but um, basically, aggravate the muscle such that your body's natural healing processes can kick in and do the work. Here I'm going to show you on two muscles groups. I'm going to show it on quadriceps and I'm going to show it on hamstrings. I'm absolutely not going to show it on IT band because like I said, do not foam roll the IT band. Again, I'm getting off track. It just gets me heated. Anyways, so here you go. Okay, what are you going to do? I recommend with this, using a very soft foam roller, you might have to use it at first and then build up to the one that's a little bit harder. Eventually, you wanna build up to something that's very, very hard. A wine bottle is beautiful for it. Um, if you're, uh, you're able to swing one, uh, a wine bottle works very well because it's very hard, but like I said, you're gonna have to work up to it and you will find if you do this every single day, you will be able to get to that point and you will start noticing some lasting effects. So, with the quads, here's what you're doing, okay? Everyone knows this foam rolling, okay? This is what I talk about when I talk about YouTube. Everybody on YouTube just sits on their foam roller and just foam rolls like this, and they're like, yeah, this is the quads. And then they roll the IT band. And then they foam roll the IT band, etc. And then they roll on their back and do the hamstrings and everything else. Anyways, so here's what you do. Rest at the top of the quads. Quadricep muscle is starting up right on this bone right here. That's where it's starting off, okay? So we start near that section, okay? And then like I said, you're applying pressure to the area and you're gonna move that muscle through its range of motion. So what you're gonna do is just bring your knee or your lower leg up and down like that. Do that 10 times, okay? You then move slightly lower on the quads. Your quads are starting at that bone and inserting on your knee. So we're gonna run down the entire length. So you start up here, you move a little bit lower, and then you go 10 times, okay? You hit that spot. You move just a tad lower. You do that 10 times. A little bit lower, 10 times, a little bit lower, and now we're at the insertion on just above the kneecap. This is gonna be the most painful spot, 100%, and you just withstand it. Trust me, withstand it. You do this every day, it will get better. And you go 10 times on that spot, and that's it. Then you can loosen it out by doing one or two of those nice broad strokes, just to loosen it out. So, that's the method. You start at the top, do 10 of those little knee flexions, then you go a little bit lower, maybe an inch, an inch lower than that, you hit that spot. Inch lower than that, hit that spot. Depending on how tall you are, you might be there for a long time. For me, it doesn't last that long, fortunately. But anyways, you get to the knee and you're done. Same exact theory, but I'll just show you what I do for the hamstring. Before, before you say, whoa, Frank, what are you doing hamstring for? I, I, I thought you had a hamstring injury for two and a half years. Well, first of all, I had an MRI last year which showed there was actually nothing going on in the hamstring itself. What in fact is going on in my hamstring is simply a issue in my back. 
um, and my hips and that's causing the hamstring itself to do a little bit too much work or put a little bit of stress on it and over time progressing into a run it gets aggravated especially off a bike hamstring itself is actually okay it's just being overworked due to other things going on in my back and hips nonetheless like i said it doesn't mean that you can't do this uh, it's gonna it'll help you regardless of whether i have an issue with something or not to get the hamstring you need a have your feet, you need to be sitting on a table or something like that. Use either a softball or a baseball, depends, whatever size works. Um, like for me, I think the softball raises me up a little bit too high off the table and I can't get in there. So I use a baseball instead. So, same exact theory, we're putting pressure on a muscle while moving it through its range. Just like we did with the quads, where we started up at the top and worked our way all the way down to their insertion with the hamstrings we're going to do the exact same we're going to start at the top and work our way down so we're going to start right at the top right underneath that bone right there in your butt okay we're going to start at the top put a good amount of pressure on it and then you're going to kick your leg out okay you may have to put your hand down to keep that weight on and you go 10 times you move it a little bit down. Now, there are three hamstring muscles here that we're, that we're working with. Um, there's a more lateral one and then two more that come a little bit more medially uh, on the inside of the knee. I'm right now going to be focusing on the lateral one. It's just a little bit easier to show, but you can do all three of them. Working at the top and then inching your way down. And all you're going to have to do for that is start a little bit more lateral or start a little bit more medial and you'll get it regardless. Starting on the lateral hamstring, like I said, you start up at the top, right underneath that bone, and then you're going to kick your leg out, moving it through its range all the way to straight or as straight as you can, can 10 times. You're going to move down an inch, okay? Move an inch down. Again, so you move 10 times. I'm not going to show you all 10 to keep this video short. Um, now, as you're doing it, try to stay a little bit tall. If you kind of crouch down as you're doing it, you're getting a big stretch through sciatic nerve. Um, and then you're kind of like flossing the sciatic nerve and that can kind of aggravate things uh, a little bit for some people um, if they have issues there. So stay kind of relatively tall or like you're not, you don't have to be upright, but stay a little bit tall and just kind of work that muscle through its range. And then eventually you get to the bottom and then you do your other 10. And anyways, that's it. And you can, you can use this for any, any muscle group there is. I'm just showing the quads and hamstring because it's kind of easy to show. The calves, it's very effective. Start, say at the bottom and just pump your foot back and forth like that as you sit on the foam roller and then move a little bit up and pump it back and forth and then move a little bit up and pump them back and forth. That can be very effective. Anyways, so those are the strategies, those are the techniques that I use pre or post run, pre or post bike, whatever. It will get less painful, I guarantee that. And like I said, you'll eventually have to move to harder and harder foam rollers. Anyways, that's today's video. I have an easy bike to do um, and then some, some of my own strength to do. And I'll see you again tomorrow at 4 p.m. Thanks so much for watching. If you like, uh, hit that like button, subscribe, Share, hit that little notification icon in the top right to see more content coming to you every day at 4 p.m.